Today we're going to look at Ansible for infrastructure automation. Now again, this is one of those top five use cases for scalable infrastructure automation. And this is configuration and drift management. Now before we even dive into the code again, let's go have a look at our platform. Because remember, this is a platform. And we have the ability to go look at things like collections. So collections are certified, so we have support with these. These are supported by the partners or by us. And ultimately, this uh, certified collection which sits inside of Automation Hub allows us to access roles, modules, or any other type of operational knowledge which has been built for these types of tasks. So if you have a look at all of our partners which contribute, we've got a number of partners, so we have a lot of content to start off with. So before we even dive into configuration, you should always have a look to see, you know, do we have have anything available for us that we can actually use and which collections we can use. Now if we go to our controller, uh, we're not going to run a configuration job, we did that in provisioning. So what about doing something else? Now if I wanted to go and maintain, for example, a firewall configuration, because you know sometimes these things change, one of the really cool ways to do this is to use scheduled jobs. So I'm going to go now and build this job template and ultimately I will always kind of revert back to trying to use a workflow because obviously it makes things a little bit more flexible but you can see I'm building out this template now and I'm choosing the template that I want because ultimately this job I want to go and make sure that the firewall uh, security and the firewall configuration on my host are always going to be maintained now I've built this template what are we going to do let's go and start building a workflow for this now remember a key thing around the workflow is the fact that we can build a logical progression of automation so instead of just running one job, we can tie a number of jobs into it. And this also means that we can introduce things like some kind of notification, maybe some ticket enhancements or anything like that. So it's always really good to work with a, with a workflow. So we've now gone and we've built the workflow. We're gonna add our template to check the firewall configuration. Now we're gonna add another one. Okay, so we are gonna add uh, another step into this workflow. And this step is gonna be all about making sure that if something goes wrong we can create a ticket right so we want to be able to you know basically inform our team that if something has gone wrong on this on this job now we're going to do something a little bit different now because instead of just having a template and a workflow we're going to actually create a schedule so this is really cool because what it means is controller can actually run this job without us interfering and ultimately maintain things. Now this, this is a really simple example for infrastructure, but imagine you're doing this on the cloud. Maybe you wanna make sure and you wanna maintain your cloud hygiene, make sure those instances are tagged correctly, things are working the way they should, things are configured the way they should. Schedules are really powerful for that. So we're setting up a schedule here. You can see once we save this, we're gonna get a breakdown of when the job will run. So you can see there, we've got the job running and effectively this, this job should then run. And if there's a problem, we'll get notified by a ticket. So now we're, we're leaving it and let's see how this goes. We can see that the job was scheduled to run and it's run by itself. So again, this is really cool. Take a configuration job, take a job that we want to run continuously and schedule it. So it happens on a constant basis. And this is a great way to be able to manage drift and configuration. Now if we dive into it, you can see all the job details just like we would typically see it when we run a job. So that's a really cool way. Now, what happens if we don't want to do that, but we want to be able to trigger these types of jobs and this type of configuration management, but from the host. Now, this is where we have another feature inside of controller and inside of the job templates called callback provisioning. So if we have a look now at this uh, template here, which is all about restoring web services, if we go down, you can see that I've indicated or I've enabled provisioning. So this allows us to basically trigger this with a unique host key and with that API call. So maybe we set up a service or perhaps you're running satellite, you wanna use the same mechanism for satellite. We, we're gonna see it here effectively. So here I've got my, my rail box running, I've got a web server running, and I got a little bit of magic in essence because I have system D monitoring these services. So should this service be stopped, ultimately what's gonna happen is it's going to issue that, that API callback to controller, right? So now we're gonna stop this service and we should see the job kick off because that callback would hit controller. And this ultimately allows controller to intervene. 
So you can see now we have a restore service job kicking in. This is the job that we set up before for callback provisioning. And it's now and going to rectify the situation. Let's go and have a look at the status. We can see that uh, the web server is back. You can see that it's been running for a couple of seconds. So this is a really easy example to show you.